I'm Nina Knox, strategic advisor to Heotherium. And so, Nina, how did you get involved with disruptive technologists and the event tonight? Um, I've been following disruptive technologies topic most of my career. Um, I worked uh, in corporate consulting, and for the last couple of years, I've been advising some fascinating startups. And I do believe that technology is one of the greatest forces, and we live in a pretty interesting era right now. So that's how I got uh, involved, and uh, this is my, I think, second event. Yeah, you're, you're definitely right. It is a very interesting era. There's so many things going on and so many advancements. Um, and tonight, we're going to be talking about healthcare and you know, what modern technologies are in, you know, medicine. Um, what do you feel about, do you have any experience in technology as far as um, healthcare is concerned? Uh, actually, I'll take you to a little bit of a different angle because I'm more interested in uh, data when it comes to healthcare. For example, you know, selfishly, I'm going to tell you about the project that uh, we're involved in. We believe that, you know, any data, even like patient medical data, you know, should be treated as property. So from that perspective, I'm seeing, you know, a huge shift. And this is where technology uh, like blockchain and others can significantly help that movement, I, sh I should say, because, you know, first of all, you want to own your data, you want to know what's happening with your data, and frankly, if it's being used by third parties, you want to make sure that you, you know, if somebody gets a monetization from it, you should be incentivized, you know, and it should happen with your permission, similar to consumer data, uh, for example. So from that perspective, so I'm not a healthcare expert per se, but I love to use technology to solve for different problems across different verticals. Yeah. And that is so, I mean, right now, uh, there's so much data out there and people are kind of losing their privacy, whether they know it or not. I was looking up healthcare plans last night on the internet, and I don't think I was on a, a real, you know, website. And by just clicking, like, I accept to have all of these third party emails and people call me. And so that's a great example of what you're just talking about right now. Someone has my data because I was looking for healthcare plans. <laughs> Lisa, I'm going to take it, you know, even further. Maybe it's not appropriate to talk about it, but like we are women and most modern women use those apps, for example, to keep their periods. Okay. And I don't know if you read the latest news, you know, most of the information from those apps were, you know, given to a platforms like Facebook and things like that. I mean, do you want to happen it to you not to uh, mention that it's such, you know, personal, you know, data? So um, I love technology, but I also want to make sure we are responsible on how we use it and what we use it for. Mm -hmm. Well, that I commend you for doing that type of work because it's people like me and a lot of other, you know, average Americans um, that don't know you know, who is accessing what and when. You just think you can download an app, you can go on a site. And, and I know this is, um, many countries are also going through this, but I know um, data privacy, especially Facebook, like you mentioned, I think we're all really heightened to that right now. Yeah, and I don't think it's just an American issue. I think it's a global phenomenon. But um, at the same time, you do want to educate people too because, you know, some things are happening because people have no clue. And it's a question of privacy, but also it's a question of efficiency. It wouldn't be nice to have all your data in one place so you don't have to repeat same information, right? Uh, for different providers or insurance companies. So you do want to bring that efficiency and this is where you can control uh, in a good sense of where that data as well. But I don't think it applies to US only. Um, and some best practices come from different countries based on my experience, including Asia and Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. Right, where the population is much bigger. Right. So that's even scary to think too. It's like, wow, how does somebody manage all of that information? Where did it go? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there is personal information, there is financial information, medical information, interest. I mean, there is a reason why they say that data is the new gold, right? So. Well, give me a lot to think about. <laughs> I'm going to password protect a lot of things now. <laughs> right. But I would say it's not just, you know, uh, password protection. I mean, it's a concept of having a digital, right, you know, identity and encryption. And, you know, I mean, I, I know we love and hate technology, and I think mm -hmm. we will always have that relationship with it. But it's a human factor at the end of the day. So once, and I also want to make sure we don't use that human interaction, because to me, technology 
technology is the enabler, right? And you can only take it so far. Um, I mean, we can talk about artificial intelligence, we can talk about, you know, blockchain all we want, but at the core of it is the human factor, you know, people, and, you know, what we do with those interactions and data as attributes. Well, thank you so much for educating me a little more on this subject, and I look forward to hearing you speak a little more tonight, too. Thank you very much, and I'm learning something new every day, so yeah. there is no expert in this space. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, that's why we're all here. It's all different people with different backgrounds, and we all learn something. Thank you again for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you.